Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lend me your ears. Growing up in a volatile community, I have lost several friends. Many forced to take on the lifestyle of badness due to the lack of opportunities and positive role models in our society. These, including several other factors, have promulgated the high levels of crime and violence in our beloved nation. Ending crime and violence is a key national priority. Now, not just for government only, but for us as the citizens, especially youths, who live in fear that our lives may be cut short simply for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. This is no exaggeration, my friends. Violence is one of the leading causes of death of young Jamaican males. Additionally, one in every four Jamaican women have experienced sexual violence and the reports of violence against women and girls have also increased since the pandemic. We know that human rights-based approach has the power to tackle the root causes of conflict and crisis by addressing grievances, eliminating inequalities and exclusion, and allowing people to participate in decision-making that affects their lives. Societies that protect and promote human rights for everyone are more resilient societies, better equipped through human rights to weather unexpected crises such as pandemics and the impacts of the climate crisis. Equality and non-discrimination are key to prevention. So yes, when certain people or groups are excluded or face discrimination, this inequality drives the cycle of conflict and crisis. For us to recover better, means strengthening our commitment to human rights and achieving the goals set out in the Sustainable Development Agenda. This must be tackled by highlighting inequalities and working as a country to rid our country of infringements on human rights which adversely affect the progress of our society and exacerbate the inequities that spark violence. Today, I am making a petition to all well-thinking members of our society to end violence and protect those most vulnerable to abuse and mistreatment. Crime and violence is far too prevalent in Jamaica and it continues to impact the lives and realities of youths, families, and our women and girls in all spaces and from all backgrounds. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, emerging data and reports have shown that there is a sharp increase in all types of violence against our women and girls, particularly domestic violence. Even worse, we know that violence still and too often remains largely unreported due to the impunity, the silence, the stigma and our damning culture of see and blind, hear and deaf. This mentality is a virus and we must move swiftly to end it. So as we continue to work to address violence, friends, we must know that violence is not inevitable. There is more evidence, now more than ever. We know that works in preventing and reducing it. We need an all-hands-on-deck approach. We no longer have time for tokenism and photo ops. We need to accelerate justice reform and legal frameworks that are accessible and fair to all Jamaicans. This has to include ensuring services are available and accessible to protect survivors and witnesses and must include cogent and equitable charges for offenders. We must also work to support a high quality security response rooted in community policing, human rights policies. We have work to do, my fellow Jamaicans. Finally, as a people, we have to address the many institutional and structural barriers, harmful social norms, patriarchal systems, and negative stereotypes, and last but not least, toxic masculinity that continues to contribute and encourage crime and violence. Violence affects all of us, every one of us. It is clearer that now more than ever, we are all in this together. All members of society are affected, and so we can all be a part of the solution. 
I therefore admonish everyone in all spaces where you live, where you work, where you play, on the street side, to the boardrooms, and even on social media to raise your voice as we all work together to try to transform Jamaica and end our culture of crime and violence. Let's do it so young men like myself can have a Jamaican future that we all can be proud of. I thank you.